I, Michael made it so easy to uh, roll in on this point and, and this, I think given an exem absolutely exemplary introduction. I, I, I'm not just being polite to him. I, 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 I'm an old hand at these things and I think that was almost the, the, one of the best and clearest I've heard. I feel very uh, much a bit of a humbug here because most of what I'm going to do is, is, is very um, episodic and not at all structured and I, I haven't, I'm not even showing the Kunsthaus at Graz because I didn't consider it to be sufficiently uh, responsive enough, but, but uh, maybe I should run. I, I start off here uh, when I was a very young architecture student. I started at 16 and my first holiday job was selling ice creams on Bournemouth seafront. This is not a Bournemouth uh, capsule, this is actually a Blackpool one. I, we can't seem to find the picture of this. But um, I think I got interested in what are now re having a rebirth in, in, in the world of sort of adaptable architecture, which is the capsule. Every, every Chinese student that comes near me uh, in a number of different institutions wants to do capsules. But I lived in a capsule for seven weeks with 92 wasps and a lot of fruit. And I think that subconsciously I enjoyed being in this sort of preformed thing that could be rolled off Bournemouth Beach and, and, and stuck in a shed and then rolled in again. And it, 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 it led you to a very different attitude to architecture. Uh, we also, of course, I should mention, we are in England and the English have this p predilection uh, for silly things and invented things. I think that I was glad, I was delighted when Michael mentioned invention being so high because it's my strong opinion, certainly in academic circles, that invention is not given a very high, uh, you know, many, many more obscure things that have often nothing to do with architecture, given much more uh, house room. Uh, this is my sort of academic bleat. And, and that invention, which for Christ's sake, we depend upon our ability to, to, to invent. We don't have resources enough without thinking and doing, you know, some, what can you do with a, a pin, whatever's in your back pocket and a piece of string kind of attitude, I think. is, is. And maybe that's because one was of the generation that benefited, if, if that's the word that one can use, from the aftermath of the Second World War. That in fact, despite all the horrible things that happened in that war and other wars, uh, there was an enormous amount of, of, of spill-off in terms of what you could how you could glue wood, how you could hang things, how you could deal with new kinds of structures, how you could deal with, with, with low resource. Um, and, um, you know, the Heath Robinson world is, I think, still a, somewhere deep down there in, in, in the English culture. And I think that, that when I was starting architecture, there were two types of people I knew, those who really wanted to be painters, and those whose legs were sticking out from underneath a clapped out car at weekends. Some, of course, I think, and they, they tended to hover around the Foster and Rogers office, were possibly combinations of, of the painters and the car stickers. And I can remember people reporting to me who were from friends working in Foster's at the time when the uh, building in Norwich was finished, the, the, the Sainsbury Centre said, we have got the longest neoprene gasket in the world. Well, I thought, good. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what the Plug-in City was about. That I think Plug-in City was a, about fiddling about, but it was also, in a curious way, a, a, a combination of Romanticism and the Meccano set. And um, I think the Romanticism aspect of it is, is, is that which is not often discussed by outside observers. It's the one which I remember myself. We were happening to work, we were, our day job was working for Taylor Woodrow on system building at the time. And I was pissed off with system building. I thought it looked awful, because it did. Uh, and surely there were ways of combining capsules together and certain bits and pieces together. Uh, and I suppose, and, and I didn't, didn't realise at the time, but my, my seven weeks with the wasps was probably well, time well spent. Though the other aspect of the systems, of course, was the in integration of, of such notions that why not make your piece of furniture into the thing that you can go shopping in? Meaning, why have dividing lines between one category of object and another? Why have, a, why have furniture and industrial design objects and tableware 
and things that go on the wall, and the wall, and the house, and the city. That, that all, all these could be in, interdependent parts. And so this is a, a drawing which I don't show very often, which in fact indicates that the, the piece of furniture could, could go on to a track, the red tracks and the blue tracks, the directional. Your, your piece of furniture could track out and you could go down into the middle of the city or wherever else you were, we were trying to get to uh, on your armchair, which of course was a, a, a mobilized element. And of course we even then had the technology to do that. It's just that people didn't sort of were a bit thrown by the idea perhaps. And on, on the other hand, of course, there were always more formalized parts of the same kind of process that, that one still had this notion that perhaps a university would be a collection of these, these um, adaptable objects and that that particular nodal collection perhaps would be a bit more formal than not. In fact, if I look at the plan of it now, it's straight Ecole de Beaux-Arts, in fact. Um, I think the high moment of, of, of Archigram, as it always has been, because he's the most talented of, 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 of all of us, uh, is Michael Webb. And the Kushikal was truly, you know, whether the biblical sort of he took up his bed and walked or, or you know, the, the extreme mo moment of the suitcase. Uh, it was the total environment, uh, the inflatable seat, the armature, which is a very important aspect of it, and the enclosure. Mike is an extraordinary guy. He's the same age as me and he lives in Long Island right now and he is still drawing some of the old projects. He's, 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 it's it's uh, perhaps not sufficiently known that he, he's extremely productive these days and has, produces a lot of drawings, usually unfinished. As soon as he's got the idea done on paper, he, he stops, more or less. But um, he's still investigating aspects of the Kushikal and the Sin Center, uh, interestingly. But I digress. I think this is a definitive moment of, of, of adaptableness. And of course, it is, it is also manneristically exquisite. I was thrown a few years ago when I went to do some stuff at the Oslo School of Architecture, which is in a converted electricity station, which was it's the first time that David Green's big enthusiasm, which was for the MOBOT, the, 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 uh, the robot mower, the first and only time I've seen the MOBOT is in Oslo, where they have it tracking over the top of the, the, the lower part of the architecture school. And I was really excited, you know, and I was visited it several times. But the kids underneath the MOBOT were doing the straightest architecture you could imagine, not a single one of them. Was, was remotely interested in the MOBOT, nor were they interested, as far as I could make out at that moment, and I'm talking about four years ago, uh, in, in, in adaptability and the implications of that MOBOT. And I, of course, felt terribly sad about this and miserable about it, and, and bleated into the architectural review about it, because it seemed to me that, it, was it a lost, did they just say, well, that's nothing to do with architecture, it just keeps our, our grasp even. So that, that, that you know, our dreams had come true and the kids sitting underneath them who are supposed to be architects uh, were totally disinterested and were doing these very nice, lovely, sweet, calm, Oswegic architecture. 